Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Ricardo and I'm Bujo Boosted. As you guys know it already, I'm almost done with my green lights from 1917 and I'm currently moving into my new um, Scribbles That Matter journal. That's why today I'm going to give you my top tips on how to move into a new bullet journal. So these tips are mostly for those of you who already have a bullet journal and are moving into a new one. I think that they are useful even for those of you who haven't started your first bullet journal yet. So my very first tip is to think about what kind of journal you want to move to. When I first started journaling, I didn't know that there were so many different journals and systems. It's very important to know if you want to have a dog grid journal, a ruled journal, a square journal, if you want to have like a blank uh, journal. Also, it's important to know if you want to have a spiral notebook or if you want to have a bounded notebook. Also, think about the size because you can have A5 journals, A6 journals, you can have small journals, big journals. Your journal can be a hard cover or a soft cover. My point is do research. You can go for example on Instagram and look there for inspiration on Pinterest. But, but yeah, it's important to consider all of the different possibilities so that you'll choose the, the right one for you. My second tip is to think about how long you'll use your journal and to plan it accordingly. Now this may be hard for those of you who have just started, but I've been journaling for over a year and I kind of know how long uh, a journal is going to last. For example, I know that a Leuchtturm probably lasts for four months. This new Scribbles That Matter is probably going to last only three months because it's got less pages. According to how long you plan on using your journal, you may set it up differently. To give you a clear example, I've just set up my calendar within my Scribbles That Matter journal. Now, I know that I won't be using this journal for longer than three months. That's why I only have a calendar that lasts till August. If I had a journal that lasted more than that, I would have a calendar till September or maybe October. Also, it's important to know if you want your journal to be more of a long-term journal. In that case, you can have long-term collections within it. Also, it is important to know what you want to use it for because some of you may only have like a personal journal that I use for like everything. I know that quite a few people have like a, a, a personal journal for their personal life and another journal for their business, for their work. In that in mind, you know what spreads you want to include, what spreads you want to migrate from one journal to another journal. Also, of course, if you know that you want to use it on a daily basis, you may consider having like an A5 journal, but if it's a journal that you're gonna only use at home or for doing like drawings, for example, you may consider having a bigger one. My third tip is to use the index of your current bullet journal in order to mark the pages that you want to move uh, into your new journal. Now I'm gonna show you how I did that in my Green Lodge from 1917. So here's my Green Lodge from 1917. And as we have a look at the index, as you can see, I have some dots here on the side. I put a dot with this, um, it's a graph paps in blue, in order to track all of the spreads that I want to migrate into my new journal. It's really easy and it takes like no time. So I'm basically moving uh, the lists my alternate productivity challenge, some YouTube ideas. And if you happen not to have an index in your journal, it's always a great, great idea to have one so that your journal is organized and it's really easy to go back to all of the information once you're done with the journal. My fourth tip is to do a global review of your current journal. When moving into a new journal, it's really important to think about what worked, what didn't work, what spread you want to include in your new journal, what you want to not include. That's why before moving into my uh, new journal, I drew a spread within this journal. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Here's the spread that I have drawn for my new bullet journal. I have two sections, one for what I want to keep and one for what I want to add. I started setting this up at the end of March, actually, because I was already thinking about my new bullet journal and I saw some very great ideas, especially on Instagram. So I decided to draw the spread so that I had them in one place. Finally, when my new journal came, I was I could like go back to this page and see, hey, I really want to draw this and that. 
I don't have here a what worked, what didn't work section because I do that on a monthly basis. If you watch my um, setup videos, you know that I do that every single month. At the end of April, I'm gonna have a what worked, what didn't work in April spread and that's gonna be uh, my what worked, what didn't work section for my new bullet journal setup. Give you an idea, I'm showing you this spread right here. As you can see, I have different section. Uh, basically what you do is that you go through every single page of your journal and you ask yourself, hey, do I want to keep this page? Do I want to change it? Is there something that I really like and that I don't have in my journal right now? As you go through your journal, you put those spreads into these categories and that's gonna be really, really effective. My next tip is to get your journal in advance and to familiarize with the size of the journal. Now that applies especially when you move from one type of journal to a new, different type of journal or from a brand to another one. Because sometimes, even if two journals are A5, there may be differences. That's why when I first moved into my Scribbles That Matter journal, I created a whole spread with all of the different measurements and I'm gonna show it to you. This is my Scribbles That Matter journal that I showed you in my Scribbles That Matter review video. As you can see on the back of the journal, I've used this page to do all sorts of measurements. So I have counted the number of dots I have here, so 27 here 38 and then I've counted how many dots I need if I want to divide my spread into two three or four and I did this vertically and horizontally as well so you can see I have them here I need like 18 dots and 19 if I want to divide it in half or 12 or 999 and 8 and this is a very useful page if you want to create some spreads and you want to divide your page into two, three or four parts and you don't want to, you know, always count the dots. Final tip is to start setting up your new bullet journal while you are still using your current bullet journal. And this is extremely, extremely important because some of the spreads that you may need in your journal do take time to draw. Calendex, the calendar, all of the lists that you need, all of the all of the migrating process. And let's say you're moving into your new journal during a month that's particularly busy. You do not want to be like at the end of your month going into a new journal which is not set up. That's why I have already like started setting up this journal, even though I'm still working on this one. This way, when it's time to move into your new journal, you already have um, the basic of the system set up for you and won't take like as much time because you have already done the job like one chunk at a time so now i hope you guys enjoyed my top tips on how to move into your new bullet journal and what are your tips on how to move into your new bullet journal please share those in a comment down below and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel because i post new videos every week i hope you all guys have a wonderful day and i'll see you very soon Bye.